Hello everyone and welcome back. Just got back from the tent yesterday. Worked all day today. Got home quarter to six maybe. And now I'm just there's a few things that need to be done before the next adventure which happens not this coming weekend but the following and that's taken the fish house camper here on its first camping trip and the tent video I tried out a different boat that you guys saw in that last video and it ended up working pretty good but with the fish house here it doesn't have any way for me to run an antenna and get local channels so um, you know it has a auto satellite dome thing on top you click the button and it automatically connects but we don't you know, pay for Dish or DirecTV or anything like that, and I don't see any reason to for, I mean, I might pay for something like Starlink Internet, you know, where they have it on the go, but not for, you know, you get 300 channels and you watch, you know, five or six of them, so, but I do like to have the, um, just regular over-the-air channels if I want to watch local news in a different town, you know, or whatever. So I'm putting this in, I just put a little thingy on the outside and then I'll just take my antenna off of the, I've got one that I just have clamped up on the work camper that I used when I was, uh, you know, staying in that. And I'll just do like I did when I stayed in North Dakota and just put it on a, which was years and years ago, but just make your own little stand outside and if you want to get local channels, you set it out there. I've got my antenna app on my phone and it shows you where to point it you can see what you can get. But I needed to put a jack in. I was just going to do the kitchen TV, but with that one, I looked at it and the TV is so old that it doesn't have, it can't scan for channels. So I'm still going to put one over there because I bought two and eventually when we switch that TV out, um, I could be fishing over there and watching, you know, the news or whatever and Melissa could be in here watching a movie or whatever, but or if uh, she's sleeping, you know, I get up early, I can turn on the news and put it on closed captioning and just watch what's happening. She says I'm weird that way, but that's okay. <laughs> I loosened all of these up because this is for the digital, or I'm sorry, the satellite. And I thought, you know, maybe I could just unhook and just go through, but I'd rather leave it the way it is in, in case we ever, you can get different domes up there that will do different things. So I'll leave this the same because all the wiring's in. This is sound, and I believe what you can do is, I don't know if you run the sound from the TV into here and it'll play on the speakers and the ceiling. I haven't got it to do that yet. I tried to do it, but it's just like the TV doesn't have the right hookups or something or... I'm not understanding it, but usually I understand that stuff fairly well, and it wasn't making sense to me. So, but I needed to take this out to reach in there and make sure there wasn't a wire I was going to go through when I'm drilling through the wall. There we go. We're all set up. And that one right there, you just flip it open and you can screw your little RG6 right into it and hook it up to the antenna. I don't think that the TV in here would fit in, the, in that camper. I've got a toolbox down in the bottom of this thing <laughs> that has all the tools like that you need in a, in a camper, you know, everything that I collected for that. But until I get the slide out, I really need to get this up to the house and get it opened up and get it for sale. I think I can get, I don't know, probably almost 10 grand for it. Probably sell it for nine if somebody else wanted to come in and the vinyl flooring is cracked in a couple places here and I was just going to put new vinyl. It's not very much vinyl. But, I don't know, maybe somebody else wants to do that. I don't know. But, she's a nice camper. It's just not big enough that when we go somewhere, 
now that we got the fish house, to have the two dogs and stuff in here because we always have to take them with. I was hoping I could get that little toolbox or get that TV out, but I don't, I, there's just no way. I'll have to wait for another day to play around with that antenna. It's a 10 minutes to 8 right now. I've got two tent videos that need to be edited. I've got to get going on that. It's been a long day already. But this, this video here is going to be doing some odds and ends because we need to get this ready. And this coming weekend, Melissa and I will spend the time in there and get everything finished because then that following Thursday, I think she took Friday off work even. So we both go up Thursday and we'll stay till Sunday morning. And the boat, when I had that in the water, everything seemed to work real good. When I first took the boat, I mean, I've been in the boat many times. This is the one we had down in Louisiana, went up and down the Blind River with it a few times. But the motor, I have been used to now my 9.8 Mercury for years. And prior to that, I had a 9.9 Mercury. So I'm so used to the Mercuries. And this one here, I, I, you know what? It kind of grew on me as the weekend went because it, well, how can I explain it? It's like my Mercury is like my gas truck and this Johnson is like a diesel. It feels like it has so much power and it just chugs along. And it's not quite as fast. I mean, it's a nine and a half horse. It's not quite as fast as my 9.8 Merc, but it, it gets there and it just pushes through. And the nice thing is like you fish and then you, you know, you the wind blows you down and then you restart and go. Mercury, second pull every time. This one, first pull, halfway through the first pull every time. So, and then this, I have it tied right now, but this moves so easily that when I run it, it's constantly pulling to the whatever direction it is. I suppose just the way the prop is turning, you know, there's no resistance, it's only my hands. So after you go for a long ways, I'm not used to feeling that, but by the end of the weekend, first I was gonna leave this boat and then that motor up there and take the other one back just for this coming weekend. And Melissa and I decided, no, it's, it'll be just fine. I mean, it works awesome. So, but the boat leaks, it's riveted, so, Tomorrow, I have the hose run out here right now because Brandon wants to get his car washed and then he's going to put a car cover on it, which is sitting right there because another month or two and the sap's going to start falling from the tree. And, you know, we don't want the sun to damage. It's a nice car. But anyway, I'm going to put water in here so I can mark whichever ones are leaking. I mean, it seems like overnight sitting in the water, it would get at least a gallon of water in it and I'd have to scoop it out. And even the tent boat, you know, that leaks a little bit, but not like this one. So I will figure out which ones they were, which ones they are, and then get some of that, what is it called? I don't know, GL600, something. Anyway, you heat up the rivet to make sure there's no water in it, and then you, it's like an epoxy. And I'll get some of that done, and I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. So anyway, over the next, in this video, I'm just going to be doing odds and ends stuff, getting stuff ready to go. So it'll be a mess, but uh, at the end of the day, it will be a video. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. It's actually almost lunchtime. And after I was talking to Melissa, and then this morning I was looking online because this TV we were playing with yesterday, uh, you know, I can't get it to... I don't think, I'm not sure if it has a TV tuner in it or what, but anyway, it's so old I can't do much with it. So I went up and they had these 24 inch TVs that were $88. I mean, come on, you can't go wrong with that. So I went up and bought one and this is the size it would fit into the hole. It, it'll have just a little bit left over. It'll be shorter, I think. And I don't think that the mount will work on it. So I might have to get a new mount or modify that one to work, depending on what the holes look like on the back side of this. But anyway, I decided we're going to put a new one in there so that I can run the uh, TV antenna thing through the wall on that side also. <laughs> look at that little TV. You know what? It does have four holes on the back. I wonder if they are... The 
ones on this TV were just under four inches. Oh, these are too. I bet you it'll bolt right on there. That would be awesome. Melissa's birthday was last week and she had wanted a, one of these portable black stones for when we go camping and stuff so I bought her one of those and then a little cheapy gas grill and then I saw, I don't think I talked about this on the last video, uh, I saw on the front of this thing there's a gas outlet where you can hook up a hose like this here and be able to hook it into this or the gas grill. And then I just got a little carrying bag for this because otherwise it sucks to try to transport it around. This one isn't even a widescreen or anything. Okay, this goes to the DVD. This goes to the mini dome, which we're not using. Even the screws work. I'm just going to make sure they don't bottom out on anything. Yeah, they kind of do. I think I'll get a few washers to put on here. I think I should do all of my run the wire and stuff through here for the antenna before I do this stuff. Why well, go through, why fight it, you know? Let's see what it'll look like up there though. It'll fit in there really nice. Let's see where this hooks up. Oh boy. I think I'm going to have to lower it some so that the TV is in about in the center. Actually, if I kept the TV up a little bit, instead of having the DVD player here, I could keep it down here. But I don't think... have to drop it down a couple of inches which will not be a big deal I'm going to go do lunch and we'll come back to this in a little while. I have the new TV installed. I ran the little thing through the wall and got that hooked up. And then I took my RG6 and went out and just set the uh, antenna on the tongue of the fish house here. And I'm going to see if it'll get any channels. channels. All I need to know is if we got grit. There it is. Well that's it for the TV installs. Everything is done now. Air conditioner feels good today. It's in the 80s. And 
input. What I could do, if we were going to be somewhere for an extended period of time, say we're going to go ice fishing, we're going to be there for a week, and you can get channels, I can run my antenna and then run the cable, put a splitter before it hooks in on whatever side, and then just get like a 15 foot cord to throw over the top to go from one to the other. So then you could watch either one on regular TV if you wanted to. It's not really that worth it because we don't watch that much regular TV, but I really like having that option. We shall see whether or not... Well, I put about six inches of water in the boat earlier and let it sit level. And there's several places that it's leaking, so I guess I'm going to just be going along after this gets all dried out, cleaning it up, and doing my best to get some of that seal stuff put on to kind of... It's not going to make it completely waterproof, but it'll slow it down anyway. It's been too dry for too long, so instead of just doing the plants, I decided to go ahead and do the sprinkler. I have to do some weeding anyway, so I did do some today. And this will get the weeds growing, but at least everything... Oh, that water's cold. We'll get a good dumping. I might leave it on all night. We'll see. I put a pail in there. I want at least an inch of water to go into it. Melissa bought this wind vane for the fish house camper. We were out here for a while checking out the TVs, and now I'm just putting up some of these signs. Well, it's almost 7.30. I'm going to get inside. I've got to continue editing. The only good thing about how dry it's been is the mosquitoes have kind of died off. They still come around right at dusk, but they're not like they were. Good morning, everybody. Decided to come out here and get this stuff weeded out. At first, I thought I would harvest the stinging nettles like I did last year, but I just thought I'm going to just get it pulled out. It was starting to look pretty bad. Got that cleaned up. The ducks are out. They like to run over and clean themselves in the bowls of water I have up by the where the spigot comes out of the house. I keep some bowls of water filled up there. And I did fill up their pool this morning, so once they discover that, they're going to be pretty happy. Everything needs to be mowed and trimmed around here, but there's just still, there's a small possibility this coming Saturday that there might be a little bit of rain, but uh, 0 0.06 inches, and it's like a 50% chance, so that's not very much rain. Beauty, watch out. 
It's the most amount of exercise you've had. The front yard needs to be mowed really bad, but you can see on the edge here where it's right next to the gravel, it's just fried. And that's how everybody's yard looks that is mowed right now. Just looks dead. So what looks worse? Not having it mowed for a little bit or all dead grass? Same with the field. I wanted to take the tractor over the field, but I think I'll let that grow for now. And of course now Melissa's in love with the flowers for the bees, so probably going to get stopped either way. It's real hazy today and it's all smoke from Canada. This was the first time, I mean there's been times when the sun was like that but you couldn't smell the smoke but today you can smell it. It's, it's dropped down. I think tomorrow the wind comes out of the east and it's going to be a lot, a lot cooler out because of that because it'll be coming out the lake and that'll blow that smoke out of here. I didn't let the sprinkler go all night. I shut it off about 10, about 10 o'clock right before bed. It got about three quarters of an inch of water on it so tonight I think I'll run it one more time. And right now I'm going to grab my computer and run up to Walmart. I have one video to upload. We just got a hold of earlier this week I called up the place that's supposed to put in the high speed and once again I mean we've been on that list since before COVID and they know they ran it down the street two years ago and did some of the hookups but they don't have very many people and went through the whole thing again and she said that she would tell they have two crews that do the hookup from the street and then again at the house because you know they land, ran the lines in already and she said that they'll she would tell them that I'm getting impatient <laughs> I don't know if that'll quicken it up I doubt it if I heard that I'd probably be slower in getting there but once I get that, I don't have to run up to Walmart anymore. Sit in their parking lot, uploading a video. I threw a whole bunch of stuff in the slow cooker this morning, a frozen beef roast, six or eight frozen, a package of frozen pork chops, pork steaks on top, thin cut. What else did I put in there? Potatoes, celery, carrots. Oh, there's one more thing. Onion and then two cans of seasoned cabbage and a bunch of seasoning. Oh, and one can of chicken broth.
Not sure how good you can see it. When I look at it through the camera, it looks like the light is fluttering, even though the light isn't. It's got to be the camera doing it. But what I did was, this is underneath the shower in the fish house. And I was in the store over a half hour looking at parts, trying to make it work. Right now, the shower drains directly into what is the gray and black water tank in the fish house. It doesn't have two separate tanks. So, well, in fact, I can show you. The way they have this set up, if, if I have this closed right here, all the water from the bathroom sink, the kitchen sink, and the shower, and the toilet all go into the same tank. If I shut this right here, that one, and open this up, the kitchen sink and the bathroom sink will drain out on the ground. It doesn't have to go into the tank. That's so weird how that light looks like that. But there's no way to get the shower from there all the way across over to there. So, and I don't want the shower going into the black water tank. I mean, it's not a big deal at all if we're hooked up to full hookups, you know, water, electric, and sewer. But a lot of times you can't get the sewer hookup. You have to go, you know, to the dump station when you leave. So what I wanted to do was hook this up to separate it totally. So I can drain it myself a different way, either into a smaller bucket or anything to keep it out of that tank. So if we want to use the shower, we have the option. I can easily flip it right back to the way it was, the way I hooked it up. All I do is take off that thing that I made, spin it, and hook it up to wherever the other part of that is. But it took me forever trying to figure that out. I had some ideas and they didn't work with the piece that I took off of the, the trap and everything under the shower. So this seemed to work really good. The only thing I have to do Let's see, is that even going? And I have absolutely no clue if you can see this because I can't see the screen on the camera. Where is it? This here, which is the, when I hook it up, that goes into the tank. I need to get something screwed on there to cap it. Otherwise, if it were to overflow, it would overflow in here, or if there was any sewer gases in there, it would vent in here and everything would stink. So that's the only thing I gotta do, but otherwise, I mean, with the garden hose drain like that over on this side, it would be a slow drain. So if you had a, you don't take long showers in here though. You know, you got a six gallon water hot water tank. So you get wet, then you soap, then you turn it back on and rinse and same with your hair and everything so but anyway it would still drain if you were to take a you know 20 minute shower which there wouldn't be enough water for that anyway with hot water um you would be standing in water because it's not going to drain fast enough through that hose uh outlet but it will work so melissa's going to be calling pretty soon on her way home from work but after she gets home i might start spraying this stuff on here it was real hot, the metal was earlier with that sun hitting it, so it should have dried everything out pretty nice. The UPS hasn't showed up yet. They're supposed to deliver my new fishing pole today. It's been cooking for at least eight hours. I used one can. I'll probably get three more cans. Just hit the spots where it was was leaking. It really covers up the rivets real nice, but some of the gaps like 
in here I want to get some more coats in there and kind of fill that in. Well, it's the following day. It's a little after 5.30 in the afternoon. Had to work today. And uh, then I got back and I did stop and picked up three more cans of the stuff to go. I was spraying on the boat. And I put one of those on, but it's windy out. And the temperature, I mean, it's middle of June and it's 59 degrees right now and it's going down into the upper 30s. So I'll wait. Tomorrow I think it's supposed to get up to 72 or 74. I don't think I have to work tomorrow. Not sure on the wind. It's hard when you're spraying that. That wind really pulls it. So uh, we'll wait and see. I've got days, days yet to do it. And I thought I would come out here because my new fishing pole came in. My five foot six ugly stick. And I'm, this one is a medium. What is it? It's the same kind I have at the tent. It looks different, but it's it's just a medium. I don't know if, that, if up there it's a medium heavy or just medium, but. So I'm going to string this so I can get this clicked in here and lots of little things to do before we head up next weekend. Let's see, this is for TV hookups, so that has to go into the, I have a little thingy for that. Melissa had a whole bunch of stuff come in today that got delivered, like she had got these before, these pillow things. And now she's got two big boxes with the stuff that you stuff them with, like she did in these. I don't know if she's going to do that later tonight or not. I'm going to do the fishing pole. And I think uh, Tales of Wells Fargo is in there. Yep. In this part of the country. Yeah. Anyway, speak stand. Especially where there's gold concerned. Well, I've seen strong men come weak. On the other hand, I've seen weak men come killer. Well, this one is ready to go. I got the braided nylon 30 pound test. I've got a 20 pound leader on there and a double bladed spinner. Melissa, when we were up at the tent last time, she's using a spinner bait that has four blades. And I don't know, she just has good luck fishing though, but she had way better luck than I did. And I don't know, usually I would think that the four blade you'd want to use like in August when you kind of get into the dog days of summer, that extra vibration pisses off the northerns and they, you know, more want to attack versus, you know, eat it. Um, but it's the springtime and she was just having great luck with it. So she has a bunch of them. I may have to give some of them a try. There we go. I can't remember. I had this rod, this reel for a very long time and uh, I hope it still works good. I'm gonna have to get used to this one for so I don't birds nest it and the retrieve on this one is a 621 and I like the 541 is my favorite but it's not a 711 or whatever it is either so it should be good enough. Caught a lot of fish with this reel. And now for the Zebco 404, I've got two of these. I, I took this one from underneath the bunk at the tent when her and I were up there last weekend. And when I was out in the garage yesterday or the day before looking for something, I have another Zebco 404 just like this hanging up on a nail in there. I, I like these. I don't like open face. So if I'm, if I'm catching sunfish or crappies or perch, the little panfish, I like a closed face. Just, I don't know if you guys can remember like when I was, when my kids were little. So, you know, 25, 30 years ago. 20 to 30 years ago anyway, uh, they had the commercials on TV for a fishing pole that was cast a country mile. And I remember having them and they would cast forever at first. You never hear about them anymore, but um, that would have been my favorite clothes face. 
next to just a cheapy one like this here, a Zebco 404, or even, didn't they have a 202 before this? So yeah, they'll catch the, catch the panfish. This is copyright 2009, so 15 years. I don't know if that's when this was made, but it could have been easily sitting underneath the bunk up there for 15 years. Melissa and the dogs came out here and we're out here for about an hour. She did some more of these pillows. This is what the that stuff comes in, that fiber fill stuff. So she did some of them, got some of her lures put into her tackle box, and now she needs a new tackle box because <laughs> it won't shut. And I did finish that uh, second pole. So I've got my one for fishing for northerns or bass, and I've got my other one set up for panfish. That lake that we're going to is huge, and it's mainly known for walleyes, so if we decide to get into the walleyes, I don't know. I I guess when I fish for, I guess I never really fish for walleyes with, so, you know, most people use an open face for that, but we'll see. I'm not worried about that. I did go get a little fan, $8 fan that can be used as a bath fan. Taking a shower or anything, get the humidity out. It's not much of a fan, but it does the job. I don't want to cut a hole in the ceiling. I would love to cut a hole in the ceiling and put one of them super fans in. It just sucks the air out. You can be doing fish in here or whatever and it would just pull it out. But I'm not going to put a hole into this. It's got a metal roof on it and I'm going to leave it just like it is. But right now it's a quarter after seven. I'm going to go in there. The videos don't edit themselves. So a little more than halfway done with the second tent video. And I would like to get that done, I don't know, today or tomorrow, or <laughs> so I can get it uploaded. Good morning everybody. I've actually already been up to Walmart and uploaded a video and now I'm going to run in and get all this propane filled up. The propane has been out in the fish house camper for a couple of weeks probably now. So I need to get it going and get the uh, so the refrigerator fires back up because tonight we're doing the Walmart pickup that'll have a lot of the frozen food and stuff we need for our camping trip at the end of next week. And uh, we wanna just put it right into that freezer and anything that can go into the fridge so we don't fill everything up in the house. Just got all five tanks filled up. We should be good now.
then that should turn it back on again. Well, the telescoping flagpole is in. You can put a second flag on there, so we'll be getting one more. That's pretty cool. And then on top, that's a solar powered light, so at night it'll light up the flag. Scott stopped by. He was probably here for 45 minutes. We were chatting and he got his car trailer. He's actually going to be bringing, he has a car that he shows, and he's going to be bringing that down, I believe it was, to Tennessee in about a week. And I just put the third can of that Flex Seal stuff on the boat. I've got one can left. I'll wait till this gets dry, and then I'm going to flip it over and do a little bit on the inside. And that's as good as it's going to get. I should probably start these two trucks because neither of them have been started in at least a month. Start them up and let them run for five minutes. As soon as we get a decent amount of rain, I'll hook this up to the tractor and mow both the fields down. I can't remember what belt I need, but I know I have a video on it and I know that I showed in the video what belt I need. <laughs>
thought I'll give this vine that I got from my brother John last year a little bit of water. Everything in this garden I say is fend for yourself, but it came back this year, so. Everything looks dry in here. A lot of strawberries up. I really should just run a sprinkler on this overnight. I still can't believe the rhubarb in here. Last year I dug up every single one of these because they don't grow good out here. And I dug them all up. So this is just from roots that were in there that broke off when I dug up all the plants and replanted them. I want to dig a couple of these up and bring them up to the tent and put them on the side of the outhouse. I bet you I could dig them all up again and the next year they'll come up again from what's left in there. I'll run this sprinkler for four or five hours and I think it takes every hose I have to make it out to that strawberry garden. And I'll run it out there and run a sprinkler on that and just let it run overnight. decided tonight I'm gonna steam clean this floor. I don't know how good it'll do being such a thin carpeting but can't hurt anything. Well, I need to run in and get some more hot water in the carpet cleaning formula, but holy crap is it pulling a lot of dirt out of here. I didn't think it was that dirty because I cleaned a little bit over here by this, uh, the, the back bed booth thing with the, my little, I don't know what it is. It's like a little Bissell, one that you just use for doing spots and stuff or just a hand one. But this one is really pulling the dirt out. Well, I got some of the windows open. I have fans going. I got the big one right there. I got that one going right there. Got a little white one right there blowing kind of towards the front door. Or the only door. <laughs> and I got this little turbo fan blowing on the bathroom floor. Good morning, everybody. When I woke up this morning at 445, it was 42 degrees. My phone says it's going up to 80 today. 
it's got to be close to 60 already and it's probably about I don't know quarter after eight decided I went in there and looked and there's a lot of green strawberries on the strawberry plant so I thought I better get a sprinkler here for sure chance of rain tonight and tomorrow but less than a quarter of an inch so if I can get a good inch of water on this it'll help out everything quite a bit I should be able to flip this over today and do a little spraying on the inside. This garden up here is nice and watered now and ready for some warm weather. I turned the water back on to the fish house camper, fired up the hot water heater because I imagine today or tomorrow or both days, I don't know, Melissa and I will spend a good amount of time out here. Melissa will for sure. And like she bought cups and stuff, she's gonna wanna wash all that before she puts it away. But after that steam cleaning, it looks pretty good in here. Now that everything is dry. We'll just see where the day takes us. I might get on the mower and mow it just in front of the chicken coop. I don't know. <laughs> it's driving me crazy how horrible it looks, even though I know I should not mow because there's you know not much rain in the forecast. It's hard for me not to though. Well, that's it. That's all I'm doing to it. It'll still float. We'll see how good of a job that did. I think I mentioned it already, but when we were driving home from the tent, Melissa said my this light didn't work and the running light works, but not the brake or the turn signal. So I'm guessing it's something in the bulb. Yeah, that thing is burned out, but I think I put this down, uh, this light on down in Louisiana, so this light is a match, so I should be able to take this bulb out. One of those times where I'm glad I saved something. <laughs> Definitely burned out. Why you got my door open? I just, I don't know. Why is it running? Because I'm doing the light. I'm really not sure what it is. I switched it out with the one light and then now I switched it out with a different light because I had a second set and that one actually almost matches this one. <laughs> still a little bit different. And it still will only work in the, with the running lights. It's just strange because that bulb was burned out. It should have been seemed so easy. And I just don't think that it would be 
The only other thing I can think of, because I don't see any broken wires, is that it's this up here, but I think I just put that on there a year ago. But I have all the balled up extra wire right here, so I think I'll cut this loose, pull that through the tongue as far as it'll go, put the new connection on and see what happens. Smells really good out here though, so I'm gonna go in and see if lunch is ready. The wind is coming this direction. <laughs> it's making me hungry. You won't be able to cut this. It's not like foam, it's like a little mattress. Oh, really? Yeah. I wouldn't cut something like that, and I certainly don't want it going up off the sides. Well, Melissa and I were out here for quite a while today. I was going to take everything off that bed, and then we had a like a queen size mattress topper, but it, it doesn't work because it, it's the type that it's like it has a sheet around it, you know, you can put it onto a bed that's up to 18 inches thick, and it just won't work in this situation. I would have needed one that's like a two inch piece of foam that I can cut in the back corners over there because it would have to go into the window area because this is only four feet wide and a queen is 60 inches. So, you know, 48 to 60, it, it, it just won't work. So put everything back. <laughs> Melissa finished filling up all of her pillows. So that's all done, which so we can get that, we got that box out of here now. We have a whole bunch more DVDs to put in our, into the uh, cabinet here. I was gonna go through all them because you know, I brought these out here last night. But now I can see that I have a lot of, a lot of video right here. So we're getting to be pretty long already. So we'll just have to wait and see that when we go camping. We have, well, five days from today, at this time, we will be up at the campground. The wind has now switched around from the east. So it, today got to 80. Tomorrow's high is like 63 and the possibility of rain. And it, the switch is happening. Every time that wind blows over Lake Superior, it cools us down. Melissa and I just took the dogs on a buggy ride, went all the way around the fields and everything. And in our blueberry patch that's in the back pasture, uh, from the winter time, those bushes or trees or whatever have bent over and they're almost on the ground. So I have to go get those cut off right now and we're not gonna get anything out of that patch. You can see right here where these used to stick straight up and now they're just like this. It didn't look that bad in the spring because it didn't have any leaves on it, but all of our blueberry plants, there's a patch that's underneath here and I can see blueberries on them, but I think they're gonna need a little bit more sun than that. You can see over here where they're just all down, but it doesn't matter back there. You can see the patch now. Hopefully we'll get some rain pretty soon. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. I'm going to end this one a day earlier than I usually do just because I think it's getting real long. I might squeeze one more out before we leave to go 
on the camping trip. I'm really excited about that. It's going to be a lot of fun. I will see you guys on the next video.